Hey, everybody watching this Zoom call. I got an awesome Zoom call. This is our friend, Patty. She is brand new to the mission field. And I just want you to get some cool insight that she has on becoming a full-time missionary. She has a lot of wisdom and insight. And I'm telling you, this is a jewel of a Zoom call. You want to definitely listen to what she has to say about uh, her steps in becoming a full-time missionary. Stay tuned. Are you wanting to develop your own short-term mission teams? Or maybe you have taken teams out, but you want to go to a next level of success? Well, what we've done is we've developed this mission packet for you on steroids. It covers from A to Z. It's over 50 pages long. You can download this today, brand it to your own ministry, and modify it to your needs. All you got to do is go to the description of this YouTube video, click on the link, go to our website, and download it today. Get started in short-term missions today. All right. Well, welcome, Patty. Thank you for stopping by Zoom. I do want to let everybody know that um, I I know Patty. Uh, she was actually in our home about two weeks ago. She stayed in our home about a month and a week. And uh, we've been connected to her for about three years now. She's been coming and going to Copan Renas. Uh, and now she's got her own apartment. She's like a full-time missionary now. This is really super exciting. Patty is an absolute amazing lady. Uh, she has a heart of gold. She loves God. And uh, it's really exciting to see you on this journey, Patty, because it's just, it's so fun to be a part of this journey with you, my wife and I, to help you get established here in Copan Renas. So if you don't mind, just share a little bit about you and your ministry uh, and what you plan on doing here in Copan Renas. Okay, so I just want to thank you, Sean, for uh, uh, talking with me and letting me share what it is that God is wanting me to do here. And so um, I have a heart for people that are hurting and uh, for healing those that are brokenhearted. And uh, I believe that the best way uh, for any healing, for complete healing, is through the gospel, is through Jesus Christ. Uh, there are so many different ways in which people try to get that healing. And yes, you can accomplish that to some degree. But if you're wanting the deep, complete healing, it's only through Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, you know, one thing I do want to share is that that, that Patty is a professional therapist. So she um, has been in practice for many years. So what I think is neat is how God could take our, our sort of speak, the footstones that we've stepped on in life and take that and apply that to what he's wanting us to do in life. Because obviously I can see myself and, you know, uh, managing businesses and so forth, and then applying that to missionary work and so forth. And it's just like with Patty, you know, spending time with you, um, you know, just, you know, just things that we've talked about since you've been here. And, and just I'm in shock and awe of just the wisdom and insight that you can just share. And I can see you helping women, you know, the women that you're going to be reaching out to in your ministry and applying mm -hmm. the wisdom and insight that you've had for so many years on helping people you know, through, through certain various issues in their life, you know, mentally and, uh, and then obviously spiritually, you know, so, so it's really exciting to see you taking these skills that you have to apply it. And I believe you're going to be just, just awesome in helping people here locally in the Copan Renas area. And then obviously over the airways as well. Now, you know, you know, obviously everybody's path to mission work is different. Now, you know, a lot of people say, you know, I started on short-term missions, but I'm just saying, what was your path that, how did you come to the point to say, look, I'm ready to give up all of what I know. You know, you gave up family, grandkids, you know, I'm your, your, your career somewhat in a sense, you gave that up. Obviously you're still kind of working in that field uh, a little bit, but how did you become to the, how did you come to the point of saying, I'm a missionary, I'm going to the full-time mission work? Well, this really began for me when I was probably about 16 years old. And uh, God just put this desire in, in my heart to go to the nations and to let people know about Jesus. And um, But then I, um, I was busy with raising my family and then uh, working in my career. 
But I'll tell you that passion never left. Um, it, it, and it, it just kept getting stronger. In fact, I tried to make it go away. And finally, I realized I can't do that. And I don't want to do that. And so uh, for me, it was uh, beginning that in, with short-term mission. And uh, so I, for about 10 years, I did short-term mission. Uh, but it just wasn't enough for me. I just wanted more. And, wow. and people would say to me when I would go on these trips, they would say, Patty, don't you uh, miss home? Aren't you homesick? And I would say, well, no, you know, because <laughs> I love doing this. Yeah. And um, I, I knew that that was God that was really working uh, in preparing me to be able to do this. Amen. And, you know, uh, I've just kind of put in my my life into your your statements of what you're saying. And I can remember that, uh, you know, as a boy, 14 years old, I gave my life to Christ and there was a missionary that came to church and I went to school like the next day. Hey, I'm going to be a missionary. I don't know. It was just something inside of me that God planted uh, in my heart. And then, you know, you fast forward, you know, uh, rededicated my life at 22 and then fast forward. And I knew there was a call of God on my life. And I just kind of fell at peace that when God was ready, he would, he would make it known. I would know that God is saying, okay, this is where I'm having you go. And that's what happened to me in mission. So it's kind of like with you, you just had a total peace and it was just like your place. And it's just kind of like, you feel like, like in a, in a new suit, but you just feel good in that new suit. You know, that's the only way I can think of how to say it, but it just feels good. And uh, so it's a good fit. <laughs> yeah, it's a good fit. There you go. And it's just something you have to pursue. It just like, like, like you said, you try to forget about it, push it off the side, but God is just so graceful and wonderful. He ain't going to let it go. He's going to say, Hey, no. look, you have a heart to do what I've called you to do. And this is what I've called you to do. So, um, you know, one thing that I, I wonder in your process, because again, you know, you recently were in our home. So while you were here, I thought a lot about your process and I thought about my process, you know, so what, what is the most significant thing that you feel like you've learned in this process as far as making that journey from short-term teams to now full-time? What is a significant thing that you learned? Well, really, I would say it's that I cannot do this alone Amen. Uh, because I didn't know how to even begin. And I am grateful to you and Nancy for walking alongside me and just showing me some of the things that I needed to do to be able to get here. And then also uh, my home church was very supportive uh, and, and believed in me. And then I also had a, um, you know, a small group of women that that believed in me and they knew my passion. They knew my heart was to do missions and uh, they were just there walking alongside me and encouraging me all the way. Yeah. And, you know, obviously this is kind of like a big elephant. We're going to have to eat one bite at a time because you, you kind of said uh, several things, but we definitely want to focus on, on, on each piece that you talked about. And, you know, you said you can't do this alone. And, um, you know, I, I, I understand what you're saying there and I understand that statement, but a lot of people don't understand this. And, and a lot of missionaries have this habit and, and they, they act like they're lone rangers and they feel like, you know, Hey, you're coming into my community. You better back off. This is my community. And it's just like the wrong attitude. And I mm -hmm. talked to John Matika and you, you know who John is. And, and we talked mm -hmm. about how you could even go into price smart. And for those that don't know what price smart is, that's kind of like the Walmart of, or the Sam's club and Costco's of, of Honduras. And you know, they're missionaries, you know, they're gringos and they just, you know, they did us missionaries. We just have that look, you know, and they just won't even say hi to you in the in Price Mart. And, and it's just kind of like this Lone Ranger attitude. But what I have found over time is embracing other missionaries and embracing the work that they're doing and supporting the work that they're doing and partnering with their work that they're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it's the best way because we can become stronger. And I think I saw that more so in the hurricane where you had missionaries literally flooded out of their house and, and there was missionaries driving four or five hours away to come and help clean up and move the furniture out and so forth. And, and then partnering on feeding programs and so forth of the people of the community. So to me, 
in that sense of what you're saying, missionaries cannot be alone. We've got to work together. And, um, you know, I, people might say, why are you doing these Zoom calls and promoting other missionaries? Why aren't you like promoting yourself? Well, see, to me, I think if I can promote other missionaries and we can network and work together, God's big enough to take care of everything else. I'm not concerned about it. Yeah. Now, you yeah. talked about your church and, you know, um, you know, I think that's a common denominator where missionaries, um, you know, desire to have a working relationship, obviously with their home church and then in other churches, um, you know, if you don't mind, share a little bit more about that, because I know that there was a like a little transition process with you um, in regards to that. And and I feel if I'm going to make the correct statement here, you are really, really, really at home. I mean, you're at home with your church. Uh, you have a pastor that loves you, supports the work that you're doing. You know, just share. What does that mean to you to have a pastor and a church community standing behind you? Well, it feels like I have a foundation under my feet. Amen. And and again, it, it's about I'm not alone doing this because that's one of the things God said to me. You know, Patty, you're not to do this alone because I really was trying to make it happen on my own. And it wasn't until I, sh I would share my the vision that God had given me, uh, you know, to different pastors in the community. Uh, but then um, the... Um, Pastor Kylie has just been amazing for me. Amen. And he has, um, he's come alongside me. He's given me ideas. He said, oh, how can I help you? And they even want to bring a, uh, you know, a mission team down here. And um, so that people in the church can uh, experience, uh, you know, um, mission work in Honduras. Amen. And see, I love... I love this. I'm watching you talk and I just see the the glee and the joy on your face because I know how this feels. I know how it feels to have a ministry stand behind you because again, it, you know, you can't do this alone. You just cannot. No. And it's joyful to know that there are people and ministries it's supporting what you're doing. And again, it's not about the dollar. We're not talking about the dollar. We're talking about, no. we're talking about a, a spiritual support of saying we're behind you. We want to see this work go yeah. through. We want to see this work to the end of what you're trying to accomplish in the uh, uh, community that you're working in. And we want to be a part of that as partners, you know, and to me, that's, that's what key. That's what it is. It's key in that there's a partnership in the spirit, and we're working to the the, the same goal, and that's bringing freedom of Jesus Christ in the community that we're working in. Now, you know, again, Absolutely. we're making little bites here. You mentioned about the the people that have partnered with you in ministry, meaning there are people that says we want to be a part of your ministry, not necessarily the church. Mm -hmm. But, and, and, you know, you didn't mention your ministry's name. I still haven't learned <laughs> how to pronounce it. I know I teach you about it. I say yeah. rock em, sock em, and I don't mean to disparage your ministry name. I know there's a meaning behind it. There's a reason why you set, uh, announced it that way. But what's, in, what's the ministry's name? Rock Kazak Amats. Okay. So, and it, so that, that okay. is an ancient Hebrew war cry. Okay. And uh, when when God gave me that name, I just cried. I said, "God, what are you giving me a war cry for?" Yeah. And <laughs> um, but that's what He wants. And I have learned that you know when we go to you know go to battle, it's we don't use uh, the weapons like you would in in a, in combat. I mean, you use things like love, you uh, encouragement. Uh, you know, teaching uh, the, uh, but we are in a battle. We truly are in a battle. And so uh, that is just one of the things that Rock Kazakamot stands for. Uh, the scripture that God gave me was uh, Joshua 1 9, um, and that we're to be strong and courageous. Amen. And and so that's something I, I uh, try to live out every day. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, Again, I have the pleasure of knowing you personally, and I'm just sitting here saying, you know, you're a small stature. You're, you know, you're sh what, five, four, five, three, five, something, five, five. But five I'm just two. saying, <laughs> you carry a big stick. I mean, again, I think your big stick is the love and the, 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 
you know, it's the wisdom and insight that you have that you can kind of go a little bit deeper and help someone see something that they're not necessarily seeing. So I'm just saying you, you, you carry a big stick, you know, for the ministry, of, like you said, the war cry. But, but again, the people that have partnered with you, the individuals that have partnered with you in that ministry, what does that mean to you? Oh, that, that is very important. Uh, I, I continue to communicate with those people uh, that bring support, you know, whether through newsletters, emails, um, or through, uh, you know, uh, social media, those things. And that is, uh, that is so uh, foundational to me and something that uh, I, I truly believe is when someone pours into, whether it's my ministry or your ministry, if they're pouring into the kingdom of God, uh, that they are a part of this ministry. It's, and truly, it is not about me. It, it's about, uh, we're as a team, we are a family of believers. And, and it's so very important that we build one another up and encourage each other because there is so much going on in the world in which we just feel defeated. And so, well, who better than those that have uh, the love of Jesus in them to build us up? Amen. And, you know, I think that, uh, you know, I think we all make this mistake, whether it's in a ministry, it's in a church, you know, it's a mission work or whatever. They put the front man up front and that's kind of like the face of the ministry. But but like as you're saying, that's really not the case. And I can truly yeah. testify that to it as well. Nancy and I may be on ground here and we may give face okay. to that, but I can I can eat, go to community by community and say this is a result of. And then you can identify the team, you can identify the individuals, or you can identify the ministry that, you know, obviously gave support in the sense of, you know, prayer and so forth and money to, to, to go forth and to establish the work in this community. So again, even though we have face, that doesn't, that doesn't negate the fact that there's not people standing beside along with us in that process. So, you know, also too, uh, I had a call with an individual that I thought was, this is very powerful. I've always kind of looked for ground to sow seed into, you know, Hey, I want to look for good ground, but now my prayers changed after a conversation with him is I'm saying, Lord, where do you want me to sow? And I know people are probably saying, well, that's, you should have realized that a long ago, but I'm just saying, I feel like God has a mandate for me to sow in certain places of ministry, you know, obviously our local church and so forth, but I'm just saying, God, I don't want to pray that people will give into our ministry, but then at the same time, I'm just ignoring the fact of the spirit saying, but I've got places for you to give. I don't want to be looking for those who's going to give, but then I'm in return, not giving. So I think that that is very critical that people uh, identify that God has specific places for you to sow and to partner with. And that's kind of what Patty's sharing. You know, they're sowing their time, they're sowing their prayers, and also they're sowing their finances. And it's the place where God says, this is where I'm wanting you to partner with. This is, this. I'm wanting you to go with her and help her accomplish the work that you all have to do together. And I think that that's, what the joy is of a missionary being in a foreign land away from your loved ones, away from the ministries and churches that, that we've all come from. And they're still with you and partnering with you, even though there's distance between you, there's still that feel of partnership and working together to accomplish a great work into a community that you were sent into. So, but I, uh, you know, like I said, you know, and I've said this many times over, but it's just been a pleasure watching you uh, grow through this process, you know, because again, it's been about three years. You, you get, this is your third time to see us, right? Or come and we've seen you the third well, time. Well, um, the, the first time I came down was for uh, like eight days and Nancy had set up opportunities for me to minister in the different communities. The second time I came, I was here for two months yeah. and, uh, and I continued to do that work. And then last year I planned to stay for three months, uh, but I had to go home early Yeah. and, but I was here for two months. And then, so then this is actually the fourth time okay. I've been here okay. and, 
and then I'm jumping in and getting my feet wet and yeah, well, I'm diving in actually. <laughs> but for those the those that are watching again, I think this Zoom call is more so for people that's considering mission work full time. Mm -hmm. I hope you're understanding and seeing what she's saying. And I think this is a process that even myself and my wife gone through. It's a process. And, you know, anytime that buddy calls us and says, look, we want to become full-time missionaries. The first question I'm asking is, have you been in country yet? No, I haven't. Well, okay, let's, let's, let's take care of that piece first. And then let's work this process out. I have not met one missionary that just woke up one morning and said, look, you know, I'm going to Honduras and then never been there or been here. And then all of a sudden you're a full-time missionary. So I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a process that we all go through. And I think it's a healthy process because I think there's a time of preparation and it, it's a time to count the costs and to consider all things. So then when you do get hit, when you do get on ground, you're prepared. And I think you're very well prepared. Um, you know, obviously, uh, you know, you and I've talked about like, you know, with your profession, we've talked about equipment that you're going to need to prepare for. So I'm just saying you came down very well prepared. And I would probably say that you're, you haven't been sidelined at all, meaning hit by the side, as far as anything that you weren't prepared for. Am I correct? Uh, I would agree with that. Yeah. So see, I think that's the important part. There's preparation that we all go through. And that's something that I'm going to be working on as well. We're going to be doing a video series on, uh, you know, full-time mission journey. And I'm going to be interviewing okay. certain missionaries and we're going to take each piece and discuss each piece. So then a new person considering mission work, they're going to begin to be able to watch from A to Z videos. And they're going to say, wow, this truly prepared me and walked me through the process. So um, look, before we leave, I want to just ask you this, you know, what would you say to those that saying, look, I'm considering full-time mission work. I mean, what would be something that you could encourage them in? Well, I would say, first of all, seek God. And is this what God is wanting you to do? Amen. And if it is, uh, I would say pursue it and pursue it and don't give up no matter what the obstacles. Amen. And so so let's just kind of look at this a little bit and kind of going back to what I was saying. And, you know, my pastor, uh, you know, I've been connecting with for 30 years, Pastor Jimmy Squires. And, you know, uh, he's been in the mission field for, for well over 30 years. And he says that the biggest thing that a lot of people do is they go on their four, first short-term mission trip. They get this love affair. All of a sudden now they're missionaries. And, you know, he's seen a lot of them, unfortunately shipwreck. And I think it kind of goes back to what you're saying. You've got to, you, you got to get over the love affair there. Again, there's nothing wrong with loving mission work, but, but get over the love affair and then take those short-term uh, trips more and more to ensure that it's just not a pizza dream, but this is something truly God. But also too, you have to trust God that, that, that God is going to give you the passion and the desire to do this. And if that passion and desire isn't there, if there is not that drive, because like Patty said, she tried to walk away from it and she couldn't, I try to walk away from it for various reasons. I couldn't. I remember I was driving down the road. I finally just, I was like, God, I give up. I'm done. I'm going to Honduras. Okay, I'm answering the call. I said that in my car. I'll, I'll never forget that. God will not let it alone. If you have an open heart to do the call of God on your life and to fulfill that call, he will not let you alone. And so you will know that there's a calling. But again, if it's just a, a love affair because you just enjoyed that short-term trip, that will fade. So- so like, like, like uh, Patty said, you know, if you've got that passion and you know, it's God, there's a confirmation. We use our pastors as confirmation as well. You know, meaning we, we, we value their support, their opinions, their insights and so forth. And, um, you know, we all stood together through this process and, you know, we didn't give up. We, we allow God to walk us through the process and we're here after we're going on eight years now. And, you know, I'm still as, uh, excited and empowered to do a mission work as I was when I first hit ground. 
So, well, Patty, it was awesome talking to you. Um, I know you've encouraged some people. I know you've touched some people's hearts and uh, I know you've blessed some people to give them the courage to do what you did. And what many other missionaries have done is to answer the call and say, you know, send me, I'll go Lord. And uh, I think you've done that. I think you've really encouraged a lot of people. So thanks a lot. Well, thank you. Yes. Thank you, Sean. Okay. God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye.